My people brought the foxes over at least 8,000, if not more, years ago. As long as we have been on those islands, the fox has been with us. Santa Cruz is 24 miles long, six miles wide. But when you're on foot, it's a pretty big place to be. Some of our oldest remains that have been scientifically dated go to 14,000 years. So when we say this is our homeland, we really mean it. There's actually two creation stories, but one of them has us coming from Limu, being brought up out of the earth there. That sense of knowing, being on those islands for so many of those thousand years, they really understood their world there, made it paradise. Our people were devastated at the time of colonization. We were removed from the islands and for decades never realized our connection to them. Early European settlers on the island also altered the fragile ecosystem in fundamental ways. By the 19th century, they had established vast sheep and cattle ranches on Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa, and San Miguel Islands. And the unique little Channel Island fox, apex predator of the islands for thousands of years, was a casualty. Island ecosystems are very special places. They tend to be much more fragile than mainland ecosystems. The number of species we have on the island is much fewer than the mainland, and those species have evolved differently to suit to their new environment. Little changes uh, in island ecosystems uh, can have big impacts. There are a number of native, rare, and endemic species on this island, one being the fox, descended from the mainland gray fox, which is about 10 to 12 pounds. When the foxes got out to this island, we think they shrunk. They went down to only four pounds. Smaller than your average house cat by a great margin. Likely that was a combination of unique island factors. Perhaps there just wasn't the same kind of food base available to them out here. So they had to shrink their body size in order to be sustainable here on this island. And Another example is the island scrub jay. It is the only insular endemic bird species in North America, and it only exists on Santa Cruz Island, and that bird species actually got bigger, and it got bluer. So it's bluer and about 30% bigger than the mainland scrub jay. So islands do funny things to species, which makes them special places and makes the species on the island important to learn more about. Island foxes are pretty special creatures. They only exist on the California islands. They have a very unique personality because they don't spend a lot of time with people, tend to be very curious about what we're doing, but they also have their foxy little lives that they have to get along with. The most recent data suggests that Channel Island foxes have only been on the Channel Islands for maybe the last 6,000 years. So it's likely that Native Americans took them across with them. We do see uh, ritualistic burials that we have found with the Chumash um, obviously cared a lot about these animals. And about 3,000 years ago, transported them down to the southern islands. The fox was treated as a relative. It was a companion. It's highly prized as a spirit animal as well. They were buried with people, with abalone shells, tube whistles. They're buried with children. They were just really honored, and they were sacred animals, and they still are today. They are clever, they're smart. We're warned even today, don't leave your stuff out. They know how to do stuff. They'll open the zippers, they'll steal your shoes. We're walking around, we see one sock somewhere. They like to take things. Santa Cruz Island was home to the Santa Cruz Island Company, and that was a ranching company that would ranch mostly cattle, some sheep, and at some point pigs were also introduced to the island. Having them on the island wasn't sustainable. The vegetation in many places was reduced to bare earth due to grazing by feral sheep. When the Nature Conservancy started looking into restoration on this island, one of the first things we needed to do was remove the huge threat to the island ecosystem as a whole. So we spent about five years in the 80s taking feral sheep off the island. 
and we thought things were looking up. The vegetation started coming back. We thought we did a great job. And then in the late 90s, we started noticing fewer and fewer foxes. In 2004, the service listed four of the six subspecies of Channel Island foxes as endangered under the endangered species list. So where we thought previously there might have been 1,500 or 2,000 foxes on the island, we were seeing so many carcasses and really not very many foxes around during the day. The only way to make sure that they would survive until we could do something to remove the threat was to pull those foxes into captivity and learn how to captive breed them. The decline in the Channel Island foxes was because of predation by golden eagles. And the reason that the golden eagles were on the islands is because those niches, which normally would be filled by the native bald eagles, were empty. The bald eagles had been poisoned by DDT, so there were no bald eagles on the island. When the bald eagles are there, they mostly eat fish and other small birds, and so they don't really eat things like foxes. Golden eagles, on the other hand, are more generalists, so they were subsidized by the feral piglets on the island, and there they were, Channel Island foxes, delicious for golden eagles. We had a problem. We had an ecosystem that was out of balance. You throw one thing off and other things get thrown off, and definitely part of that cascade effect was that we were about to lose Channel Island foxes. That really happened because of human impacts to the islands and the introduction of non-native species. Feral pigs had been introduced to the island in the 1850s and we're pretty well dominating the system to ensure that we weren't just removing the golden eagles that had nested on the island, but we also removed the, the draw to the island, which is the feral pigs. I started going out there in the late 80s and I've seen the transition of, especially on Santa Cruz, of the removal of the sheep, the pigs, the golden eagles, and I've seen the resurrection of the native plants. By removing the pigs, Fox really did save our archeological sites in that whole process. And that's hard to do because the entire island <laughs> is full of our remnants of our lifeways out there. There was this one pair of golden eagles that was quite smart, had seen many of their compatriots uh, trapped and pulled off the island. And uh, it took us two years to get them, but we finally got them. When we went into that one nest um, to remove the chick and fledge it out in Northern California, uh, there were a lot of fox collars in there, a lot of radio collars, uh, a lot of fox bones. I think we pulled out, you know, over a dozen uh, collars and over two dozen individuals. So even just having this one pair with a chick nesting on the island was still impacting the fox population. The non-native species were removed, and so once the feral pigs and the golden eagles were removed from the island, that removed the threat to island foxes. We were able to start releasing the, the captive individuals into the wild, and yes, um, fortunately we saw a pretty quick turnaround. Uh, the foxes knew what to do what they got when they got out into the wild. In 2006, I started working as a fox biologist on Santa Cruz Island. Figured out somewhere along college that field biology could be a career, which I never thought could be the case that people would actually pay you to tromp around in the woods and uh, research animals. So when I started, we think that there was about 100 individuals on Santa Cruz Island, and 20 of those were in captivity. I was also thrust into a role where very quickly I was the only person on the fox project and figured out how special these animals are. There was one individual in Laguna Canyon, the canyon where the golden eagles lived, and she was a survivor. There really wasn't any other foxes in that canyon at the time. We started noticing her kind of limping around and looking a little woozy, put out a trap, captured her, and she was just covered in parasites. We think she was just very, very unhealthy. Um, so we took her in, gave her some flea medication, uh, kind of let her feel better, put her back out into that canyon with a collar on, 
and then I spent the next 10 years tracking her. She was our oldest fox uh, that we ever had on collar, and uh, she lived to be 10 years old and died peacefully under a bush, and I got to spend 10 years watching her grow up. Santa Cruz Island was really in a crisis mode uh, when we started working on the island in the 80s. We uncovered challenge after challenge, but with our partners, found a way to pull off a pretty tremendous restoration effort. The low of the population declines, we were looking at like 15 island foxes on a couple of the islands, and Santa Cruz, the bigger island, had around 50. This is a species on the brink of extinction. It's, it's extraordinary that that we were able to bring them back from that brink of extinction. And where it went from a moonscape out there, where nothing was growing, after the removal of those animals, we were seeing pine forests. Now they're taller than me. It's been over 20 years that that all has happened. So we've seen this coming back. The island fox is a perfect example of, of what can go right for an endangered species. It had all the right pieces, identifiable threat, partners that were willing to help, scientists that were engaged. Those are the pieces that you need to get something recovered and off the endangered species list. When I look at this island, of course, I see the vegetation that's come back. I see the foxes that are all over the place. Um, but I also hope that people are looking to us to understand that conservation done right will produce fantastic results for ourselves and also for future generations. Knowing that the main threat to their continued existence was golden eagle predation, this gave us something to focus on. One specific thing that if we could fix that problem, then maybe we could bring the foxes back from the brink of extinction. It gets really challenging with species that have many threats, more than one threat, or if it's habitat loss where it's something that's difficult to reverse. So it was very fortunate in the case of island foxes where it was something that we could work on, we could pinpoint, put a lot of energy into that one thing, and not to say it was easy. I mean, removing 5,000 feral pigs from an island off the coast of California is not easy. Bringing foxes into captivity for captive breeding is not easy, but it's something that you are pretty sure is gonna work because you know what the problem is. Island fox was the fastest recovered mammal that's ever been listed on the endangered species list. It was about a dozen years between when it was listed and when we were able to take it off the list. Human impacts are, are often what drives a species towards extinction, but it's human efforts that can reverse those population declines and cause a species to become recovered. And that's the land managers, the biologists, other scientists, and the general public. Everyone working together, working towards a common goal, that's how we're going to reverse extinction. <laughs>